remove their head coverings. Let your own preferences now, uh, you know, have their way. And again, keeping in mind the last game, try to get the person who you regard as the highest uh, attractiveness in your opinion. Just as Kenrick expected, each person found a partner within a point or so of themselves. So is it really the case that from the day we're born, the die is cast based purely on the way we look? Thankfully, no. Physical attraction is not the only criterion for choosing a mate. There's a lot more to sex appeal than meets the eye. I love red wine. The Hadza of Tanzania, one of the last hunter-gatherer tribes. Not typical subjects for a sex appeal study. But in 2006, scientists came here to find out which men were most successful at passing on their genes. The Hadza are known for their singing and storytelling, so scientists wanted to see if there was a connection between their voices and their ability to attract a sexual partner. What we've done out there is recorded a whole bunch of men's voices and we've recorded how many children that they've had. And what we found is that the men who had the most number of children also tended to have uh, the lowest pitched voices. Gambo and the men with the highest pitch voices tended to have the least number of children. We jumbo. We jumbo. We jumbo. We jumbo. Jumbo. How could the sound of your voice have anything to do with the number of children you father? We think the significance of a person's voice in terms of its sound may be related to the fact that during most of human evolutionary history, when the sun went down, it was lights out. And therefore, at night, sound was one of the principal domains in which critical kinds of interpersonal interactions occur. At the forefront of these nocturnal interactions were seduction and sex. When a woman and a man out on a first date make small talk, a crucial internal antenna for sex appeal is hard at work. That antenna isn't focused on what they're saying, but on how they're saying it. I love red wine. I love red wine. Oh my God, his voice is awesomely sexy. Now, his voice can totally take your pants off. That's for sure. <laughs> Her voice is, uh, it's that perfectly rich mixture of, uh, of femininity and uh, clarity. I like a sweet voice, you know, and she has a sweet voice. You definitely want to feel like, you know, you're the girl, <laughs> and if a guy talks maybe softer or sweeter than you, then you may sort of wonder about that. <laughs> when the sunlight strikes raindrops in the air, they act as a prism and form a rainbow. When the sunlight strikes raindrops in the air, they act as a prism and form a rainbow. When the sunlight strikes raindrops in the air, they act as a prism and form a rainbow. When the sunlight strikes raindrops in the air, they act as a prism and form a rainbow. Nearly across the board, men chose women with higher pitched voices. I found the uh, high pitched voices better. It sounded more feminine. It really sounded more like someone who was younger, close to my age, and uh, probably more fit. I thought it was healthier and younger and uh, sexier. When we think about women's voices, the, the first thing we might think is men are really liking these soft and low sort of voices. Uh, but what our research shows is quite the opposite. One of the main reasons why is that younger women have higher pitched voices and women with higher estrogen levels also have these higher pitched voices. And it will probably come as no surprise 
that women chose men with deeper, more masculine voices. It just sounds better <laughs> when they're deeper. Definitely find a deep voice more attractive for a man. The deeper voice, it just seems like they might be stronger or um, bigger, maybe, than the higher pitched voice. The pitch of the man's voice is really related to how much testosterone the man had at puberty. So men with a lot of testosterone at puberty grow these really low voices, and men with not so much testosterone at puberty have these higher pitched voices. So when women listen to these voices, they may not know that they're picking up on these testosterone cues, but their behavior is acting as if they, they sort of unconsciously know what's going on here. What's going on is that women are reacting to clues that reveal much more than the shape of a man's vocal cords. Because testosterone levels in a pubescent boy don't just create a sexy voice, they build a sexy face and usually a sexy body too. Just as in women, high estrogen leads to a more attractive face, waist, more attractive breasts, as well as a higher voice. And there's a fascinating twist to this tale. As women's faces become more appealing during ovulation, so it turns out, do their voices. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Dr. Gordon Gallup of the University at Albany in New York has been studying how estrogen affects the pitch of a woman's voice over the course of her monthly cycle. One, two, three, four, five. The principal impact of hormones on the sound of a person's voice occurred during puberty, but they also occur in adult females as a function of fluctuations in hormone levels during the menstrual cycle. Ten men have volunteered to rate the attractiveness of ten female voices. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. At the end of the experiment, Dr. Gallup reveals a surprising bit of information to his subjects. You may or may not have noticed that some of these voices came from the same females. In fact, there were four females who participated in this, and we recorded each of their voices at different times during their menstrual cycles. This is the voice of one of the women. One, two, three, four, five. And here is her voice again at a different point in her cycle. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Six. The second recording is ever so slightly higher pitched than the first. Three, four, five, eight, nine, ten. It was recorded when the woman was ovulating at her most fertile. It really did make a difference. I, you know, I definitely rated them differently, not knowing that they were the same people. We all seemed to pick the, the ones that were the most fertile, so it was pretty surprising to me, too. When females are in mid-cycle, when they're the most fertile, the most likely to conceive, their voices are rated as being significantly more attractive. A beautiful face, a great body, a sexy voice. Created by hormones, driven by genetics. What we call sexiness is just our genes' relentless efforts to sell themselves to the most attractive partner. But is there a way to beat the genetic odds if they're stacked against you? Sex appeal, a subconscious drama playing in our brains, directed by our genes, leading to that all-important climax, Choosing the partner with whom you want to mate. And this is where the plot thickens. For human beings, because we only have a small number of offspring, it's a very important decision who you choose as a mate. A lot of people say, oh, gee, both men and women like attractive partners. But an attractive man is not quite the same as an attractive woman. There are pickiness in both men and women, but we're picky about slightly different things. The difference between what the sexes want in a partner is reflected in the way they present themselves. Women are the fairer, more ornamented sex, but in the animal kingdom, it's different. Males have developed elaborate adornments to attract the attention of would-be mates. Male peacocks have eye-catching feathers. There's the bold mane of a dominant lion. 
Human males don't sport such obvious anatomical adornments, but there's one thing they do have. Toys.